Another New Year video. Hey guys, this is Kim. Welcome back to Fable Stand, and I want to talk about picking your metaphor for 2018, or just picking a metaphor for your life, <laughs> your life at this very moment, um, in this very space time, and like the it's like a metaphor that resonates with that. you know you know what I mean, like picking a metaphor. So what does that mean? So I think last year, like around the same time, like also around New Year's, I made a series of videos about gamifying, gamifying your life, and I call it the threshold mapping. Um, I think that's not really the official name. I don't know what I'm calling it, but it's just sort of like picking a metaphor for your life. Basically what that means is kind of like, um, it's sort of like looking at the story of your life, looking at the narrative of your life, and looking at what you've gone through, like what you resonate with, what you don't resonate with, and then just picking a metaphor to express how you live your life or how you view your life. For example, I like the idea of, or like the metaphor of a journey, and I like the metaphor of an RPG, or just being in a epic fantasy journey quest game, or the idea of a quest, or the idea of a journey, and also leveling up, to defeating bosses, defeating monsters, and also like um, problem solving and collecting items on your journey, expanding the map, exploring the map kind of thing. So I like the idea of a game. So gamifying speaks to me a lot because of the idea like it just taps into so many layers of what I believe how uh, how life should be lived. How I see life is life is a journey, it's a never-ending journey, it's a never-ending story, and then sometimes there's no set destination, like you have an sort of overall objective of what you want to accomplish, which would be your quest, uh, on the way to your final destiny or your uh, on your way to the big monster that you have to defeat or on the on your way to treasure you will encounter different stages and different monsters and different things that you or puzzles that you have to solve that you have to overcome you have to use the abilities that you have gained or the experiences that you've collected from your past to overcome those bosses or mobs and you have to use the items that are you know at your disposal to kind of maximize your your efforts and ensure that you are successful and that kind of thing. I also like the idea, like usually in these games or these big RPG games, like there's a story, like you know the unfolding narrative and whatnot, and there's also like this map that you get to explore. You know, you get to explore the, say the village. You get to talk to the villagers. It's just really about exploring. It's kind of like you're free to explore this world and kind of take things at your own pace and also just hit those story points, the really important ones as you go along and it just... And also I like the idea, I really really like the idea of leveling up because I feel, for me I feel like life is about leveling up. I mean you level up every single year if you know what I mean. <laughs> but life is about leveling up, it's about like becoming better, it's about committing to your own narrative of becoming because if you think about it like when you level up your character or when you when you level up you're still that character you know your lore your backstory is still the same but then you encounter different characters and then you grow as a character but your stats continue to stack up and your stats continue to grow it's kind of like you're becoming more you're becoming more capable you're just becoming more who you are and you're just leveling up and in different areas of your life, like maybe you become more wise, you become more good at problem solving, maybe you could have better at emotional intelligence, You're, you become better at dealing with certain types of relationships, and you become better at understanding yourself and stuff like that. So leveling up is just such a cool concept to sort of kind of use to envision one's life, for me anyway. So that would be my metaphor, which is like an RPG game, leveling up, life is a journey, life is a quest, etc, etc. I don't know, I just feel like picking a metaphor for your life, it just helps you sink into your life more. It just helps you understand where your story is. It helps you understand who you are as a person, what your tendencies are, how you envision your experiences and that kind of thing. I think having a clear picture of that, I don't know, it just help, really helps you navigate your life and it just helps you like understand what you're trying to achieve and helps you reflect on what's happened using that metaphor framework and stuff like that. So for you, it doesn't have to be like an RPG story or journey or game or leveling up. It could be like your life is like nurturing a plant or um, cultivating a garden because you feel like life is about putting in the effort and the attention and patience to growing something, you know, like it's about planting the seeds and it's about growing, uh, growing the seeds that you planted. It's about like nurturing the things and allowing them to become what what it's meant to become because, you, you know, if, when you plant a seed, it's not going to grow into something else. It's just going to grow into more of itself, right? So life could be like gardening for you, or life could be like could be like a marathon, it could be like going to the gym, it's about building up strength and resilience and lifting more weights and being more competent, that kind of thing. Or life could be about writing a story and you're the author of your story. So that's another metaphor I kind of like 
right? You can be like, you're the writer of a story, you're the hero of your story, and that's kind of my whole thing as well. Oh, there's so many metaphors you can pick. So what is your metaphor? Like, I'm really curious, because journey is kind of like a common one, I guess. How about you? Like, I'm just really interested to see that what other sort of different metaphors that people use to identify with their lives, and if you maybe you've always identified with certain kinds of figurative language or kind of phrases and then maybe you're watching this video and you're just like huh i guess that's my metaphor and i'm super i really really want to know because i just in my mind it's just i can't think of a lot of metaphors right now but well i guess anything could be a metaphor right i mean your you could be your metaphor could be carpentry harvesting wood and then sharp not sharpening it like kind of processing it shaping it and then making it to something useful or something really beautiful so that could be your metaphor it could be your metaphor it could be sewing it could be jewelry making it could be taking care of a pet in which your life is like a cat and doesn't really do as you wish i don't know <laughs> but yeah what's your metaphor i think picking a metaphor can be like so fun and yeah just having like a set of language or figurative language that you can use to talk about your life i don't know i just feel like it gives your life a lot more like it gives you a sense of purpose because if you know that your mission in life is to feel purposeful is to level up is to like for me anyway it's to level up it's to unlock the next quest it's to defeat the bosses when they when they arise it's to acquire new items new knowledge new points of exploration for your map for your map of life then it just gives you so much more momentum in life you just feel like you're really living your narrative you're like you're really the hero of your own story and i think a good place to start if you have no idea like where your metaphor is or, or kind of like what kind of what your general trajectory is as someone who is like you know like of your like what your story trajectory is um here's a good way to figure out it's something i discovered for myself if you look at all the characters that you love or the types of stories that you're into like the stories that you really resonate with like if you think about like the movies you like to watch because it's a certain type of story or if you think about the characters that you always resonate with because it's that certain type of character or the books you read and the characters in the books that you really resonate with if you look at those characters and see like what's like what are the characters that really get to you what are some of the story trajectories that really get to you then you will know how you envision your life like what's meaningful for you like how you would rather live your life or kind of it just i don't know it just reason like the things that you resonate with is usually like in fiction right the things that you resonate with in fiction is usually the narratives that you embody exist and exist in as well so let me give you an example of uh, for me some of my favorite characters in the story or the, some of my favorite types of story so this is one character that I really really love her name is Alandra and she is a dragon character from the story Tooth and Claw by Joe Morris Walton? I forgot her name. I will look it up and I'll put it in the description box. It's one of my favorite books ever. So yeah, so Landra is a female dragon. I think she's just coming of age. She's just old enough to get married. The story is basically Jane Austen and but dragons. Like dragons in the Victorian society with dragon customs that reflect the ideals of a Victorian society. It's super fascinating. I strongly recommend that book. And so Landra is one of the it's one of the the sisters of this family and basically the patriarch of this family um, has passed away and then all the siblings kind of have to like fend for themselves like some of the older siblings are already married so they already have a home or some are just working like you know trying to make a name in their society and then the two female dragons i think the story centered around them because they're female and in time in a dragon victorian dragon society they kind of have to depend on the male counterpart so they're looking for suitors they're looking to be married and so landra uh, I think she, when she goes to live with her aunt, no, she goes to live with her brother for a while. She encounters this super rich <laughs> prince type of, uh, of of a dragon bachelor, and then she falls in love with him. So it's kind of the story of like, kind of like how Elizabeth falls in love with Mr. Darcy, you know, someone who's, you know, who comes from a modest background, and then she meets someone. Uh, you know higher up in society and then they fall in love and not because of their status just because she generally has interest for him like she loves him for him kind of thing and I really love this character because it's always for me like my personal narrative it's always about looking deep into yourself and being seen as who you are it doesn't matter what your status is what your status of wealth is what your reputation is it's kind of like just what you see in front of you like me 
just me in front of you this is the person you meet who am i how do you see me based on my actions my worldviews how i carry myself and that kind of thing so it's just like i really like the idea of individuality and respecting and honoring and loving someone for their individuality not because of all the things that are attached to them being authentic there we go that's the word and being authentic and expressing who you are at any given moment and interacting with people with that authenticity and that honesty and that kind of stuff there are like other characters that I really like. Um, I might have mentioned this before. I'm in love with Peter Pan and Monkey King just because they're both tricksters. And Peter Pan being a trickster boy who never grows up, who's always trolling the adults around them. <clears throat> if, you, if, you, if you don't already know, April Fool's Day is my national holiday. Like, people hide from me on April Fool's Day. I'm always pulling these like really super annoying like pranks on my family and on my friends. <laughs> Yeah, I love a good, I love a good trick. But yeah, I love trickster characters. I love how they're always challenging the norms. They're kind of pissing people off, but not in the way that's really threatening. It's just in the way that kind of alerts you to truth, which is what a trickster does. Yeah, I just like tricksters so much. Like they're really fun. They're really playful. They alert you to truths that you don't know about before, or they're just the truth that you refuse to see by being playful, by playing a trick on you, by going against the rules and stuff. I like re rebellious characters. Yeah, so those are my examples. Um, but yeah, by looking at your your the characters that you resonate with, the characters that you really like, you can sort of figure out who you are and what's important to you and what resonates with you. I feel like this is getting a little bit off topic because I was talking about metaphors, which has nothing to do with Zolandra the Dragon Lady. And yeah, I think I kind of went off topic there, but oh well, I'm pretty sure you'll, I hope you'll find this interesting i hope you find your own metaphor and also your character type i don't know <laughs> i just wanted to make this video and somehow those two topics just came together it really made sense when i made the outline but now that i've said it it kind of feels like two separate topics but whatever you get what i'm saying you get what i'm trying to say and yeah so i think that's all i want to say in this video like i said lots of videos to make you can probably tell because i'm going to be wearing the same t-shirt in these videos but just bear with me you know i really love this t-shirt it's my favorite t-shirt at the moment so don't say anything yeah so until next time be behave your own story keep calm and tear on and i will see you in my next video or my blog or my instagram etc